Welcome to Speaking of Schaumburg. I'm Village President Al Larson. In this episode, we'll be joined by Donna Panico Atkins and Melissa Jones to learn more about this year's environmental fair. Then we'll talk to John Latko and Roxanne Benvenuti about the Prairie Arts Festival. We'll close out the program by meeting Jeff Ney from the Schaumburg Boomers. All of this and more today here on Speaking of Schaumburg. The Schaumburg Environmental Committee and the Schaumburg Township District Library are hosting an environmental fair where the whole family can learn more about caring for our planet. Here to tell us about the event is Donna Panico Atkins and Melissa Jones. Well, welcome to Speaking of Schaumburg. It's nice <laughs> to be here. Well, tell us about the environmental fair. We have been planning this for uh, probably more than a year. Uh, we worked closely with uh, the uh, Village of Schaumburg, the Schaumburg Environmental Committee to uh, offer this together. So we had to battle for a date because it's hard to find a date when two major entities can actually be together. And so we ended up with May 2nd and we will have uh, lobby tables uh, representing uh, various uh, community resources. Uh, Where's it going to take garden, place? Uh, at the main library, Central Library 130 South Roselle Road. Okay. Uh, in the lobby, we'll have a lot of uh, tables with exhibitors. And then up in our classrooms, we will have programs sponsored by uh, the Environmental Committee uh, of uh, Schaumburg. And they will also uh, have uh, one of beekeeping um, and uh, clean, uh, green cleaning products. Um, and uh, how to power your home with the sun. And it's all free, isn't it? It's all free. And uh, there's going to be a history of Bussy Woods uh, and talk about some of our community oh, resources that oh, we sure. have at hand. Now, you chair the Environmental Committee, don't you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. How long have you, have you been doing this? I've been on the committee now about six or seven years. Okay. And it's just been my passion. I was very happy when there was an opening and I first was a member and then when our previous chair had to step down, they asked me and I've been enjoying the work and the reaching out to the community and the educational. How, how, many, how many years has this, uh, uh, this uh, symposium that you're hosting, how, how long has you been, you been doing this? We, Schomburg, originally had a partnership with the Hoffman Estates Environmental Commission about 10 years ago. And then in 2011, the Schomburg Environmental Committee decided to branch out on our own because we wanted to gear our presentations more towards residences and homeowners. And then just last year, we partnered with the Schomburg District Township Library, and we are very happy with that partnership, and we were very excited to be able to do that again with them. Okay. How many exhibitors do you have? There's probably going to be, there's probably like 15, 20. We've got of course, the Schomburg Environmental Committee, the Hoffman Estates Garden Club, the Schomburg Garden Club, the Schomburg Bicycle Club, uh, Chicago Biofuels will be there, the Illinois Solar Energy Commission will be there. We're actually going to have an outside, we will have a solar home. You know, Peter Gore, he is going to be talking how to use solar energy to power your home, but we'll also have a demonstration outside of a solar home. We're going to have an electric car outside for people to look at and see that. What are the well. hours? Of, of it's noon to three on Saturday, May 2nd. Okay. And we'll also have uh, Habitat for Humanity is going to have a um, recycling event in our outer lot, the north lot, out near Larry's Standard. And they'll take some small electronic items and also some household items that you might have used in building, building supplies. They are very specific. Uh, because obviously they want items that they can use in their restore facility, which is in Elgin. Uh, but if you have, uh, you know, many people probably have some home building items that for whatever reason they never got to use, that those could be uh, possible donations. What's your projected attendance for, for, for the event? Well, I mean, how, how, what you do know, you expect? On a, on a given Saturday, you know, we could get anywhere from... Uh, you know, 200 to 400 people coming through the door because mm -hmm. Saturday is one of our busier days in the library. And so we get those people who 
uh, came just for the fair, and we yeah. also get those people who just happen to be here on a Saturday and uh, participate. Oh, that's great. That's great. You know, it's something that's... Uh, is, is, this, is this the second year, did you say? Or, or? This is the second year yeah, that the library and the... And the jointly finished. worked. Oh, we yeah. did one in November previously, okay. and that was good, uh, but we're hoping now, because it's in the spring, uh, there were some presenters that we really couldn't uh, utilize to the fullest in a November program, like the Tomato Lady, uh, you know, the she tomato was, lady? <laughs> yeah, she's coming again. What does she do? Well, Dresses she, a tomato? Or? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, well, I don't know about that, but she does uh, bring young plants uh, to sell. Okay. Uh, but again, that's something that you would be uh, buying in the spring, sure. but not in November. So okay. we've tried to uh, look into uh, having an event at a time when people are thinking green more so, and that spring would be in the cleaning spring. cleaning and planting and... Okay, sure. Now, and you say environmental green, what, what, what is, I mean, you, you want someone to be able to change their, their habits and... Then Modify whatever they can, yeah, if it was sure. whether using uh, greener products uh, sure. that are, what are some of the greener? The what, what are some of the greener, greener uh, products that, that, that you uh, Well, you know, since I'm not offering the program, <laughs> but I, I know vinegar is a, a very vinegar. safe a cleaning product. Tell, 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 tell me about vinegar. We're going to have Andrea Wolf give that presentation on how you can create sustainable products for yourself. Uh, vinegar is a, a big staple. Vinegar and water can clean anything from textiles to wood to your oven. And you can have a salad too, right? <laughs> <laughs> and a salad. Yeah, Multi-purpose. And okay. there's there's other products out there that you can make at home or now there's a lot more that you can buy. The market is sure. becoming more green with there. Do you have a lot of green products there to, to show people? Is it, yeah. Uh, I don't think we're going to have much to show, but our presenter might have our some things. Our presenter will be bringing some things and doing some demonstrations. How many presenters do you have? We're going to have, uh, we have uh, four lined up. We have uh, Andrea with the sustainable green cleaning products, and then Peter Gore, he was on the board of directors of the Solar Energy Association, and he's also at the Illinois chapter of the Sierra Club, About and he is going to speak on how you can convert your own home to solar energy. We're going to have Matt Haas. He was the founder of Friends of Bussy Woods and he's going to be speaking a little bit about the history of Bussy Woods and the ongoing habitat rest restoration. And then our very own Martha Dooley, our village landscape and sustainable planner. She's going to be giving a demonstration on beekeeping and how you can do it as a hobby with the delicious sweet results. And we have a, a, a bee garden in town, don't we? Yes. Yes. We also have a bluebird trail that we, we put in place on, on, the, on the village grounds. I don't know if you know that or not. I no, I did that. not. Yeah, yeah, it was a bluebird trail. Is that where you see all those little houses? Yes, along? exactly, exactly. I we had somebody what contact, that was. contact us about the possibility. Oh, so nice. And, uh, and I, there's at least one house that's occupied. I'm not sure it's a bluebird family, but, ah. but, but there's, there is a... I guess they welcome birds other than blue. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think so, right. Exactly, exactly. So... Uh, but how long have you been involved with, with the environmental committee? You said? I've been on it now uh, six, seven years. And how many years have you been, been with the library? Uh, with the library, I've been with the library over 20 years. Yeah. Uh, our green committee has been in place, I would say, nine years probably. And we, uh, you know, just decided it was a good opportunity to uh, make both the staff more aware of ways to be green and then additionally the public. And if pe people need some more information about the fair, who, who should they contact and what number should they call? Or? They can go on to the Village of Schomburg's web website. If they're a resident of, Sh resident of Schomburg, they can also call 311 and get the information and of course the library. The library website, it's www.stdl.org. Okay. It's our initials. We also have a blog, uh, Come to the Green Side, which uh, will outline everything that we have going on on the 2nd of May, but also beyond that, other uh, uh, recycling events that might be uh, in, in range for our uh, community to take part in. Thank or, you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Mr. Mayor. Thank Very you. Nice. Thank you. Mayor. Appreciate it. The Prairie Arts Festival kicks off the summer here in Chambord. Learn more about it next here on Speaking of Chambord.
Heading into its 28th year, the Prairie Arts Festival brings artists of all types, food vendors, children's activities, entertainment, and more. Here to tell us about it is Festival Chair John Latko and Special Events Coordinator Roxanne Benvenuti. Well, welcome once again to Speaking of Schaumburg. Thank you. Thank you. Roxanne, how long have you been doing this? Long time. <laughs> Don't give me short answers, Roxanne. Long, long time. <laughs> I believe this will be my 19th festival okay. this year. What do they do without you? Oh, they did fine before me. <laughs> and your, your, your chair? That, John's what, been here longer. What does, what does a chair do in, as opposed to what Roxanne does? Or vice versa? No, that's a good question. <laughs> um, at one time, there was not an events chairman, it's, uh, or uh, I'm sorry, a special events coordinator. So the chair kind of did the things that Roxanne um, does today, which is uh, oversees everything that's going on at the festival. How big a festival is it? How many artists and, and how, do you, how do you rank them and, and how, how many apply? Well, we, we have um, around 120 artists this year. Uh, and that's uh, limited to the number of spaces that we can, uh, we can use or have on uh, the grounds. Um, and uh, a lot more than that apply. The, it's a juried uh, show, so that means that there are jurors who look at all of the entrants and um, who are the jurors? pick the best. Well, who are the judges? Um, Anita Miller is our uh, main, main juror. Okay, and who is she? What does she do? She was uh, an art professor and she's an artist. Okay. Now, my understanding is there's another aspect to, to the Prairie Arts Festival called Plain Air. What, what, is, what is Plain Air? What is, what is, explain that. Yeah, that's a new contest that was started five years ago. It was actually a suggestion that came from a couple of the artists who participated in the Prairie Arts Festival. They wanted to start an event where it's just a little contest where artists can paint on plein air, which means in the open air, outside, in the elements, no studio, just painting what they see. So um, it's grown over the years, and we have a chairperson for that, too, Irene Peterson. She's been chairing that event, and each year it's grown. Where's and, it going to be? Um, well, it's everywhere in Schaumburg, and that's what's interesting about it. We like seeing um, Schaumburg through the eyes of artists who actually paint anywhere they prefer in Schaumburg, as long as they're in within the boundaries of Schaumburg. Okay, that's interesting. So there's 55 participants this year, and it's separate from the Prairie Arts Festival. There are a few artists that do both the Prairie Arts Festival and plein air, um, but they can do either one or both. And those uh, artworks will be hung in the gallery from mid-May through the month of June. And you, we have watercolors, we have oils, we have a lot of jewelry, is that correct? There's jewelry, um, there's pottery, there's glassware, there are um, photographers, um, woodworkers. Um, we have um, all the arts represented. And where does uh, this event take place? It takes place um, on the municipal grounds between the village hall, around the village hall and the Prairie Center for the Arts. It's a beautiful setting. Beautiful, it's the park-like setting that everyone enjoys walking through. Um, it it's, uh, rings the, uh, the pond and uh, is also up by the, uh, by the village hall building. And there's a couple of swans out there too, aren't there? Yeah, there are. Yeah, people look look forward to uh, to seeing the swans every year, and we look forward to seeing our return as, returning artists from year to year to year. But also uh, many new ones as well. So it's definitely what are, uh, what are need to come every year to see the, see the new ones. What are some of the new ones? What are some of the new ones for this this year? Oh uh, well, we we have uh, a large amount of new ones, and like. John said it's, it's just a variety of media between painting, photography, sculpture, jewelry. You have garden work, art too. You, I, I, you people. There are some sculptors who do things that yeah could be used for. Uh, and there's entertainment. What kind of entertainment can we expect at, at the Prairie Arts Festival? Well, we have three different areas of entertainment on the ground. So, um, it's it's made up of guitar, folk, jazz, harp, and type of atmosphere we call it atmosphere music so as patrons are strolling through the grounds they can hear music the entire time that they're here and um, also you can purchase lunch or a snack or an ice cream and sit down and in front of the musicians and enjoy the music what kind of food can you can, we, can someone expect to, can oh to great you? food great food for the second year in a row we're doing um, a, a, like a mini food truck rally we have five food trucks out there and we also have four other food vendors that will be in that uh, food vendor truck area so lots of variety we have uh, um, Mexican food pizza hot dogs now people can buy art 
And if they, if they pay a certain amount, $100 or more, they, they can award their artists with a ribbon, right? Yes, and that's a great it's a program. It's called Purchase Award. Is it's a it? Purchase Award, and that's a great program. You know, you've done one from uh, many years. And what, what's great about it, and, I, and what I want people to understand, is it's not a donation. We're not asking uh, for people to make a donation with that Purchase Award request. They actually just pledge to spend money at the fest, but they get to keep the art, and then we hang a certificate in the artist booth with their name on it, indicating which artist they chose to pledge their How much do they pledge? Piece. Uh, most people do $100, but we've, we have uh, some that do a couple hundred all the way up to $1,000, depending on. They might want to be purchasing artwork for their business, for their lobby, um, or for personal use. And or when does this gift. event take place? This is the 20, they say 28th year? 28th year, wow. always Memorial Day weekend, the Saturday and Sunday prior to Memorial Day. So this year it will be May 23rd and 24th, 10 okay. to 5, both days. Rain or shine, we will be here. And, and artists, so the artists. artists who get there early get donuts, don't they? They do. <laughs> we, we, uh, we, we like to make them happy. So we provide them with coffee and donuts, kind of get them going for the morning and, and for the patrons to come out and and I understand, John, that you're, you're predicting fair weather for this event. Uh, so, yeah, I think someone said it's going to be perfect this year. And what is, what is perfect for you? Um, that means there's absolutely no wind, there's absolutely no rain, and uh, the temperature should be around 70, I think that would be. And I think that's what we're going to have this year. Roxanne, are you in charge of the weather? or is No, no mm -mm, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give that to you. <laughs> no, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> I'll give that to you. But it's rain or shine. We are here uh, regardless of the weather. The show carries on. The show goes on. It's a wonderful event. You, and, just, uh, you can just stroll through the grounds and, and, and visit different artists and look at what, what, they, what they're painting or what they're crafting. And, and, uh, uh, and, there, and the Park District does have a, uh, a children's activity tent art activities, so you can bring the kids and they can see, they can meet the artist as they're going through with their parents, but they can also do their own artwork at the um, Park District tent. Yeah, uh -huh. that's great, kind of a free make and take. Yes. You know, there's so many, a great variety of art uh, in that tent for right. kids to mm -hmm. make. And well, I look forward to it, and I'm sure you do too. So very much so, it's a great event. Thank you, Roxanne. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, John, thank you for being here. The Scheimer Boomers are training for another championship season. Learn more here next on Speaking of Scheimer. The Schaumburg Boomers are back-to-back -back Frontier League champions in 2013 and 2014. Can they make it a three-peat this season? Jeff Nay, Vice President of the Boomers, joins us to tell us about the kickoff of the upcoming baseball season. Well, Jeff, what do you think? I think uh, three-peat is a definite possibility for us. We're excited to get it started again. Now, what is this? Uh... This is the Frontier League Cup, our championship trophy, uh, two years running now. It's been uh, home in Schaumburg, and we're going to do our best to keep it that way. What's different about this year's team and from last year's team, besides you, of course? I'm here. Uh, the, the faces on the field are changing a little bit. We've got a, a good core of players. Uh, uh, Mike Valadez is kind of leading the pack, our catcher. Uh, he's been with the team from day one, and uh, he'll be returning for another season. There'll be some more familiar faces back. Uh, year after year, there's always some turnover, so we'll have some new guys in, uh, in training camp now for uh, a shot at uh, making the team for opening day. Uh, May 22nd. May 22nd. What day is that? What day of the week That's is That's a it? Friday night. That's the home opener. We actually open on the road, but uh, Friday night at home, uh, we'll have uh, championship ceremonies, uh, give the players from last season their championship rings, uh, raise another championship flag, and represent uh, our trophy to ourselves, I guess, at now, this Now, what point. is your role as, as, as far as the boomer hierarchy is concerned? My title is vice president in the minor leagues. That means I wear all the hats. So uh, I sell advertising for us. I, I get involved in the marketing and operations of the, uh, the team from day to day. Uh, I get a uh, little into everything. That's what keeps it fun and, and interesting for me. What's, th what's different this year from the two previous years that it's going to bring us the third championship? Well, hopefully uh, another good team on the field with uh, the right mix of talent. Uh, the, the veterans and the young guys fill in their roles to, uh, to keep the team winning. Uh, off the field, the, the similar promotions, the fireworks nights, the world's largest marshmallow fight, the annual squirt gun fight. Oh, uh, squirt gun fight, that's fun. That's, uh, it's been a popular one. I We've got ambushed. <laughs> I'll bet, yeah. I got uh, ambushed by <laughs> me a couple too. kids visiting somebody down in the, uh -huh. in the dugout, and all of a sudden they opened up on me. Yep, <laughs> We've had fun with that one. That'll be back. Uh, all, all the staples that everybody has uh, hopefully come to know and expect of us, and then some, uh, some new additions as well. 
Okay, and, and, and uh, t t tell, tell me about the food vendors here. Food vendors, we actually just this year are taking uh, food and beverage in-house, so we'll be our own concessions company rather than having a third party doing it for us. Uh, so we're trying to streamline the operation a little bit, make sure the, uh, the service is fast for our guests uh, with quality food uh, to boot. So uh, excited to, to take that in ourselves and uh, make a good showing of it. Now the name Boomers, where did that come from? The Boomer is the male prairie chicken. Uh, prairie chickens used to be uh, all over the place in, in Illinois before we uh, urbanized everything and uh, they're now an endangered species and the, the male of the species is nicknamed a boomer and one thing after another uh, that became our nickname. Why is it, why they call them boomers? It's part of their mating ritual actually. Uh, the male stomps out a, uh, a piece of turf and has a, uh, a sound he makes with his uh, air sacs or something and uh, makes this booming sound to attract the females and grew the nickname the boomer and you had a contest. We made it into you had our a nickname. naming contest, didn't you? It was in the mix, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Boomers. A little different. Something that no other uh, sports team in the country has and that was uh, important to us to, to stand out a little bit. How many how many how many guys are on the team? Uh, it's a twenty two to twenty four player roster. Um, and we have about thirty five guys in uh, in the training camp right now. So uh, uh, Jamie, you'll have some decisions. Thirty-five. To make. They're in a training camp. Or have they been screened, and, or, or they, yeah. they just showed up? Or? No, they're all recruited by uh, by Jamie, our manager. Uh, guys who played for other clubs, free agency and trades, and all those uh, kind of typical uh, behind the scenes things in sport. And uh, he'll take that that group and, and make some tough decisions to to pick the the twenty four best. Uh, start our season. Now, you, you, you look for host families, don't you? Yes, uh, I'm glad you mentioned. T we, tell, tell me about yeah, that program. A great program, and, and it's a spot where we do have some need for the coming season. So we're looking for families who have a, a spare bedroom, an empty nest, or a young family with a, a big home and an extra room or what have you that they can uh, basically rent out to one of our players, uh, two of our players, whatever the case may be. Uh, for them to, to live with them during the baseball season. The, the big benefit for the families is uh, unprecedented kind of behind the scenes access. They get to know these guys personally, not just as the, the guy in the baseball uniform, and uh, uh, get the, the behind the scenes of what life is like in the, in the minor leagues. They sometimes make some lifelong friendships that uh, last well beyond uh, the baseball season. How many host families uh, do you have? There's about a dozen or so, and with 24 players, some folks have room for one, some have room for two or even three, so uh, it ebbs and flows a little bit. We even have a couple guys staying with uh, Friendship Village here in town. Really? Uh, really? Yeah, they rent an apartment there, and uh, the, the folks living at Friendship Village get a chance to have uh, a guy in the in the community with them to, you know. Now how does, the, how the does that work? I mean, do you, you you ask the team, okay, who who wants to to uh, stay at a house? Pretty or? much, yeah. Partnership we made with. Uh, who, who picks those? Uh, we do that for the team, uh, trying our best to to match the players and, and what we know of their personality with uh, the family we're we're introducing them to, whether it's uh, an older couple with an empty nest or uh, a younger family with a. Uh, a playful guy who you know might be inclined to play a little catch with the the eight year old uh, one afternoon or something to that effect, and it's uh, um, almost like the online dating world where uh, we try and uh, make good matches and uh, put together good uh, good pairings. Tell me about the sort of prom promotions besides the the the, the, you know, the, the water gun, yeah. the water gun. The, the fireworks are the headliner. Everybody wants to know when there's fireworks shows. We got 21 of them this year, so appreciate uh, your help with that and uh, excited to, to have that be a big part of the summer. Uh, this year we'll be hosting the Frontier League All-Star Game. So uh -huh. uh, we have the mid-season break where uh, all the, the stars from each of the teams come to our place to play uh, uh, the All-Star Game. There's a home run derby. We even have a luncheon that'll be open to the public uh, here at the Hyatt in town that uh, uh, fans can come out to to uh, hear from John McDonough, the uh, president of the Chicago Blackhawks. He's going to be our keynote speaker. So that'll all be a lot of fun. Uh, we have a uh, superhero themed night, a Star Wars themed night, a Harry Potter themed night, a Jimmy Buffett themed night. We have a, a thing for theme nights. So a lot of different fun at the ballpark, some giveaways, a replica ring for, uh, for fans to get, uh, emulating the championship ring the players will receive on opening night. Uh, car flags to, to hang on your window and show your boomers pride. There's uh, something going on every day. It's a fun well, atmosphere. Well, it certainly sounds like it. it certainly yep. sounds like it. And you're optimistic, of course, as far as the 
Always. It's a team. Spring uh, eternal, right? What, what is your background before you, you came on board the Bloomers? I've uh, been 22 years now in this business. I tried to stop counting when it passed 20, but uh, somebody pointed out to me it's 22 now uh, seasons in minor league baseball. I've always been in Chicagoland, started out in uh, Geneva with the Kane County Cougars, and uh, when the, the Schaumburg Boomers came along, I uh, jumped at the chance to get in on the ground floor and do this from day one. Well, you're certainly a great addition to, to, to the club. I appreciate that. You know, Thank you. It's, it's good to have somebody that enthusiastic about, about Boomer baseball. It's a fun place to work. That uh, makes all the difference it's, in the it's world. A, it's a great baseball stadium, too, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, a beautiful stadium. Terrific, uh, terrific setting for us right there off the Elgin O'Hare Expressway. Real easy to get in and out of. We let people park for free, and they get in the game for 10 bucks or less. So it's a hard deal to beat here in the neighborhood. Oh, Jeff, thanks, Thank thanks, you, thanks for being here. And, My and, pleasure. Uh, Good luck. I don't think you need good luck. You've got oh, a great. Oh, we always a, need good luck. You've got you a great. You got a great team. team. Thank you. Thank you. That'll do it for this edition of Speaking of Schaumburg. Join us again next month for an all-new episode. Until then, I'll see you around town. <laughs> <laughs>